What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Sector for Nerds. I'm Ryan Brower, and today we're here to talk about Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 2, Episode 4, Faster. An episode, it was an okay episode by the end. It definitely started out where I'm like, oh no, this isn't going to be that good of an episode, is it? But I think by the end of the episode, I'm like, all right, you know what, I can get behind this a little bit. Definitely one of my least favorite episodes of The Bad Batch, but it still didn't make it bad necessarily. We'll talk more about it in a minute, you guys, but first up, I'd like to just say welcome to my channel, and if this is your first time here, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel. And if you've been here before and you haven't subscribed yet, I highly encourage you to do so. Also, if you guys head over to my other YouTube channel called Top 10 Character Moments, I'd highly recommend you guys subscribe there as well. Subscribing to both my channels is free and it helps to support me as a content creator, so it would really mean a lot to me if you guys subscribed. Okay, so let's talk about this episode of The Bad Batch. Now, obviously, I had a gut feeling that this episode, no matter what, was going to be a step down from last week's episode, because last week's episode was so good. This was the first episode of Bad Batch where we only had select members in it, because it's either been we've had all of Bad Batch involved, or we've had no Bad Batch in the case of last week. This was the first time where not only was the focus on select characters, but those select characters were the only ones that were there. Like, we had Omega, Tech, and Wrecker, but Echo and and Hunter were nowhere to be found in this episode. Omega and Wrecker are playing Dejeric at the beginning of the episode, and it is revealed that Wrecker owes Omega two cartons of Mattel Mix. If I ever go to Galaxy's Edge again, I definitely need to get me some Mattel Mix. So they go to this planet. I don't remember if they ever reveal where it is that they're going, but they basically are, the Bad Batch are introduced to Riot Racing. So I've never, I don't know if I've heard of this before. I don't know if this is just a new thing or whatever, but I wrote down in my notes later on in the episode, it kind of just occurred to me, I'm like, like, this kind of reminds me of that one mission in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Like, one of the first, like, sets of missions that you get into at the start of the game. I, I forget, like, which planet you're on, but you have to do, like, some racing there when you end up meeting Bastila. I don't know if it's the exact same thing, but it did remind me of it. So then I'm like, okay, this is a Sid episode, so I have a feeling I'm not going to be as interested. Like, I honestly just haven't been invested in the Sid character at all. Like, I'm just not really a big fan. It kind of just makes me curious, like, why the Bad Batch keep trusting her and why they continue to do work for her when their debt has been paid. Like, I did a whole episode about this on season one where it's like, okay, Okay, they finally paid off the debt, that's gonna be the end of the Sid stuff, but then, like, Sid continued to play a role in the show. I kinda wasn't interested in this episode, because they introduced this droid, what's his name, Teo? And it's like, he's supposed to be the guy that we're rooting for, for in this pod or whatever, like, this droid that we have no connection to, and it's like, alright, root for this droid, and it's like, like, obviously it was very sad when it died and all, but I'm just like, yeah, man, I'm just not get in this episode. But then the, the mob boss character, at least that's what I've referred to him as, is the mob boss dude, is uh, he comes in, he's like, all right, you guys lost that race, you know, you guys gotta give us Sid. And then when the droid dies, he's like, you guys gotta forfeit. But then Tech's like, no, I'm gonna step in and do it. And Tech was kind of already planting the seeds earlier on that he showed some interest in these races. Like he was studying the tracks, studying the terrain, studying the traps. And I'm like, okay, like, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing Tech go into race, but I don't know if it's gonna happen. And then it does happen. And that's kind of where I went, okay, I can get behind this. I can, I see where this is going. Tech talking about how he's gonna stick in last place. I'm like, what is this, Mario Kart? I mean, because come on, let's be honest, some of us, you know, when you're playing Mario Kart, like if you're sitting in the back, right, the, the further back you are, the better items you get, like the, the bullet or the piranha plant or the star. But at the end of the day, this ain't Mario Kart, so I'm not sure what his strategy was at the time. I love the idea of Tech dropping his weapons to get more speed, like that was such a creative thing. And it ends up helping him in the end because when they try to pull that same trick that they p pulled on Teo the last time where like one racer's in front, one's behind, like the mob boss definitely had a coup set up, right? Where it's like, all right, one racer's gonna go here, one racer's gonna go here. I'm like, darn it, I hate coups, I hate mutinies, I hate all that stuff. 
This episode didn't have as many coups as the Avatar Book 2 finale, but it still had some nonetheless. Tech won, and Omega and Wrecker were like, oh my gosh, you did it, and Tech's like, you sound surprised. The crowd chanted for Tech, and that's really crazy, especially when he came out to crickets, like, minutes before. So then they go to the mob boss to get Sid back, and I'm like, uh-oh, like, are they gonna, are they gonna give Sid willingly, or are we gonna have to take her by force? And so my boss is like, hey, a deal's a deal. You guys take her. And then I did see like one of the guys, like he had a, a pistol sitting right next to him. I'm like, oh no, what's this guy about to do? But then to the mob boss's credit, he stopped him. He's like, nope, that's not, deal's a deal. This is not how we're doing it. He respects the Bad Batch's loyalty to Sid, but then he does kind of warn her, like, he does kind of warn them, like, Sid isn't who you think she is. Which I do appreciate, because it, like, does kind of set up some stuff with Sid later on in the season, and kind of prevents this from being necessarily, like, a filler episode. Because there, there was even a moment earlier where he was talking with Sid, like, because obviously these two have, like, a shared history, and he says how, like, the both of them are the same. Sid claims that she's changed, so... And then at the end, for him to kind of warn them about her, it's like, okay, this is, uh, this is setting up something. I don't know, man. Anytime that there's, like, an episode that's more centered on Sid, I feel like just the less I'm interested. I just want to see the Bad Batch going off, doing their own thing, making their own plans and stuff. Like, that's, that's what I want. So if we're going to talk Bad Batch Member of the Week. So that's right, we got Bad Batch Member of the Week, Episode 4. And I believe that this episode, it without question, the Bad Batch member of the week goes to Tech just for those performance skills in the race, using his strategies to help him win, like definitely going to Tech this week. Tech now winning two Bad Batch member of the week awards here on my channel. And I get one of them he tied with Echo, but that still to me counts as two wins. I feel like Tech is one of the more underrated characters of the Bad Batch. Like in season one, he definitely had like most moments where he stood out, but I feel like in this season, he's actually getting like full episodes where he's able to stand out. Like in other episodes, he would have like his moments where he'd do something to help the crew and it'd be like, oh, shout out tech. But I feel like this time it's like, we're now centering episodes on the fact that this guy is actually a really good character. I hope that every member of the Bad Batch is equally able to stand out. I feel like this show is reminding me of Star Wars Rebels more and more in the sense of its format. Like in season one of Rebels, it was all about kind of like the crew, like whenever they were doing missions, right? It would either just be like Ezra and Kanan or it would be the, the ghost crew in its entirety. There weren't many like solo episodes about the other characters like Sabine or Hera or Zeb. Those episodes came more so in season two when they started centering like everybody kind of had like their own episodes to shine. I feel like that's kind of what's happened here with, with Bad Batch. And then also in the sense as well of the fact that we just had a really deep and meaningful episode about Cody and Crosshair. And then we just had an episode about racing. It's almost like in Rebels. And Dave has admitted this himself, by the way. So I don't think this is necessarily a dig at Dave. And I don't even think it's necessarily a dig at anybody. I think it's just a funny way that they do things. In Star Wars Rebels, we'll have a deep, meaningful episode and then one about Chopper, which is so true. Like if you go back and watch Rebels, there's a lot of like deep, meaningful episodes and then one about Chopper. Like you'll have, oh, uh, Ezra, Kanan, and Ahsoka go to the temple. On Lothal, there's all this meaning behind it, like Ahsoka with, do you know what I've become thing? Like all this stuff, Kanan becoming a Jedi Knight. And then the next episode is one about Chopper. <laughs> Or they'll have an episode where, like, Mon Moth was, like, starting to format the Rebellion, and then we, the next episode is AP5 singing. And then after that, you'll have the Twin Sons episode, so... <laughs> like I said, I don't even think that's a dig at Dave. I just think it's, like, a funny format for the way that he does his shows. Like, it's cool. Not every episode is gonna be an A-plus all-timer episode, you know what I'm saying? That's just unrealistic when it comes to television shows. But yeah, like I said, guys, ultimately this episode was going to be a step down. I feel like no matter what, because of just how good Cody and Crosshair was. But this episode, like by the end, it was okay. But I think this definitely was one of my more least favorite episodes of The Bad Batch. So yeah, you guys, let me know what your thoughts on this episode were in the comments below. Make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this video with others to help support the channel. That's going to wrap us up for today. I will see you guys next time.